Hello everybody, welcome to Apex Racing TV. It's the PSR Formula Renault Series and tonight we are at the Brands Hatch Circuit in the United Kingdom. Andrew Woodhouse alongside Adam Bath and cameras provided by James Nash. Um, Adam, Brands Hatch, Formula Renault goes together pretty well I think and um, should be a good one. Good track for it, I think, yeah. Um, four races again today with the reverse grids as well. Uh, usually the races last about 15 minutes and yeah, we come to a track, we usually see cars like this racing in the uh, the British Formula 4 Championship as well. And yeah, the Grand Prix circuit, 3.7 kilometres. Uh, yeah, should be a good one, I think. Almost at the halfway point this season. Um, 60 rounds gone and uh, Jack Keighley leading the way. And um, Adam, if we take us through the rest of the Championship stand. Yeah, we're only 10, 10 races away from the halfway point in the Championship. Jack Keighley leads David Baker by uh, about 70 points, or 65 or so. Then uh, third is Marcel Van Lusenor, fourth is Paul Denton, the highest of the AMs, uh, the AM drivers, then Christian Rose in fifth, then Samuel LeBert sixth, and Pete Berryman seventh, uh, Jos Honig eighth, Stephen Baxter ninth, and uh, Tom Depka rounding out the top 10. In the AM Championship, as we were saying, it is Paul Denton leading the way. He's 234 points ahead of uh, Christian Rose. Then it's Jos Honig third, Stephen Baxter fourth, uh, fifth is Tom Depka, sixth Josh Thompson, seventh John Godfrey, and then eighth John McCutcheon, so with Kip Stevens ninth, and Ralph Cullinan in tenth. And in the team standings, it is one team rocketing away over here at the moment, and it's the Baker Simsport Europe team, 823 points ahead of the pro Apex Racing UK team. Great to see an AM driver up there, and the Apex Racing Academy team uh, in third with CQR Club fourth, Pro Sim third, Team Mad sixth and a seventh blue flag racing with uh, all the other teams that started the season, uh, rounding out the rest of the order. Yeah, it's been a great performance from Faker Sim Sport Europe so far. Um, let's face it, Apex Racing UK haven't deserved to be at the front. They've been in far too many incidents and Faker Sim Sport, you always see them there and thereabouts, Adam, finishing races and um, in recent meetings, well, finished those races a lot closer to the front as well, which does help. They always seem to have one of their drivers up there, don't they? Whether it's uh, in each of the reverse grid races that we have or in the, in race one as well, where it's set on qualifying order. They always seem to have one that's always near the front, like uh, Jack Keefley, for example. He'll usually be at the front in race one. And then you'll have Jos Honig and Stephen Bax, so they'd be the drivers that would be towards the front in the reverse grid races. So they make sure that uh, they play to each other's strengths. And that's why they're at the top of the top of the team's championship at the moment. Yeah, they know there's a chance to take the um, take the big prizes at the end of the season, and uh, yeah, that's why Jack Keithley, Jos Honig, Stephen Baxter, Paul Denton are um, are the ones to beat at the moment. Um, Graham Carroll at the moment is on provisional pole position. Martin Van Lusenord has just gone into second place, and then Championship leader Jack Keithley. Second place man is David Baker, and he's he's probably going to be starting in eighth place. So again, that's not too bad for for Baker, but. As we've seen throughout the season, uh, that's where those accidents can happen. It's, it always is in open wheel racing, really. As the as the field bunches up, that sort of fifth to fifteenth range where you see most of those incidents. Yeah, we'll probably see a few in uh, this one and in the reverse grid races. Just about to head down to the grid. Uh, yeah, so we'll see who uh, who can avoid it. One driver that uh, is a welcome sight to see in the Hall of Honor today is Paul Smith. Um, he's uh, done, it looks like he's done a swap with George Lee Wright, even though Lee Wright doesn't drive for the team, of course, but it still keeps our entry list at 18. And then we'll run you through the grid. Graham Carroll and Martin Van Lusenord back at it again on the pole position on the, uh, Carroll, second Martin Van Lusenord. Uh, Jack Keefley in third, fourth Samuel LeBert, fifth is Christian Rose, sixth Josh Thompson, seventh Jos Honig, eighth is David Baker, ninth Stephen Baxter, and tenth Paul Denton. Rafe Cullinan in eleventh with Yannick Ongener in twelfth. 13th Tom Depka, 14th John Godfrey, there's Paul Smith in 15th place, John McCutchinson 16th, Kip Stephen 17th, and River Verke rounds out the 18 car field. Incidentally, Paul Smith did join us at this very racetrack in the, uh, the comms box for the uh, the Billy Munger fundraiser that we had on uh, Friday night, and now he's racing in the Formula Renault on Tuesday. Did indeed, and at number 100, Paul Smith keeping it 100 for this one, and um, yeah, I'm hoping that. Well, I'm hoping he gets four good races out of it. We're still yet to see any of the drivers on the front row of the grid. Carroll and Van Lusenord keeping us waiting. Samuel LeBert is there as well. You see Kip Stevens popping up at the background as well. 17th for him. Uh, any moment now. Going to be underway here at Brands Hatch. 
be really fun. 15 minutes is the first race, and then we'll get a lap number for the last three. Usually based on the, the amount of laps completed in, in race one. So, seeing exactly how that goes. There's Graham Carroll then. Pole position. Martin Van Lusenod in second place. Going to win the fairly short run towards turn one. The BSR Formula Renault Series. Green, green, green. It's underway now. Start from Carroll, but Van Lusenod, likewise pretty strong. Drawing alongside into Panic Hill Bend. Carroll keeps the lead. Van Lusenod second. Keith Lee is in third. He's trying to stay ahead of Samuel LeBaire. Then it's Rose, um, Thompson and Baker. Looks pretty status quo at the moment, Adam. Everyone safely through Druid, so we haven't seen any issues there at the start. John Godfrey is getting past Dom Depko, looks like, on the exit of uh, Graham Hill. Ben's just bunching up a little bit there between those guys as they Smith. go into 30s. Paul Smith as well. Smith having a look up the inside into 30s, manages to get Depka. Depka nearly pushed him onto the grass down the back straight, but Smith survives. Also having a look is... Um, um, oh, now then. It was Jos Honig trying to get past... Um, so not your Sonic, Josh Thompson getting past Christian Rose. I don't know if you've got the same paint as me, but it's Paul Smith in a Team Mad livery for uh, this race. Looks meeting. like it to me. Yeah, black and yellow. I don't know what we've got on the stream anyway, but uh, yeah, good start from Paul Smith at one position. Uh, the biggest loser in the start was Tom Depka down two positions. He'll be hoping to get those places back. Uh, we've still got a long, long way to go here as we go through clear ways to complete the opening lap. We have Carol Orley opening up a eight tenths of a second lead over Martin Van Lusen as we go over the timing line. Uh, the closest battle inside the top five looks like it's between Jack Keefley and Samuel LeBaire for the final spot on the podium. Yeah, LeBaire's been all over Keefley since the start. Keefley's going to be looking, obviously, to um, defend. It is a track that you can defend fairly effectively here at Brands Hatch, so see what he can do in terms of that. Looking just behind them is Josh Thompson. He's made um, one position up, Christian Rose has dropped down one, and then Dave Baker just at the back of that train in seventh place with um yeah and then the rest of the field pretty pretty close together so um it's looking good so far it's a beautifully clean start and, and that's what we'd like to see not too many times you get a bsr race where everyone finishes we had that in the bsr master mix five uh, in race one as uh, samuel lebert really Even. on the back of of uh, jack keithley they're almost going into the back of it it's seldom a, a bsr meeting where you get a um all the drivers make it through one lap, let alone all finishing. So we'll see. We'll um, hold our breath on that one. But Heathley, yeah, having to push pretty hard to um, fend off the attentions of Samuel Libert. Heathley, the championship leader, he qualified very, very well in third position. Only um, two tenths of a second slower than Graham Carroll, but now under a lot of pressure from Libert, the Frenchman. Louis Libert isn't really struggling in the dirty air at all. He seems to be uh, handling the. Uh, the fact that he's here behind. He okay, looking to the outside into Paddock Hill. Might get a cut back here. Oh. He's wise to that move, isn't he, Jack Keefley? Just in time, oh, anyway. Oh, he slides the car, Libera. A bit out of control. That just allows Keefley to um, breathe a little bit. Libera thinks about into Graham Hill Bend, but really, it's not much of a braking zone at all in these cars. Van Lusenord went a little bit wide onto the um, runoff area at the exit of Graham Hill Bend. I don't want to go any further than that, really. That's where I think it was Tom Onslow Cole that had a big one at that uh, very corner a few seasons ago. Yeah, and a Vauxhall nearly, nearly 10 years ago, 2008. A uh, problem for Paul Denton. Uh, he was in 11th. He's now in last. Uh, what's happened to the Faker Simsport Europe driver here? Uh, he's just going into Graham Hill Bend. And Looks like a spin, loses Adam, it. I think. Yeah. Uh, loses the rear, and Denton, the AM leader, um, fighting against Christian Rose for that one. Rose currently up in sixth place, so... And Denton, oh, it's a bit of a setback for him, but still a bit of time to get a couple of places back. So 15 minute race and only 3 minutes 45 have been elapsed. The left hander in, uh, into Sterling's. A uh, nice four car pack going on here. This is John Godfrey, uh, Yannick Ongener, Paul Smith and Tom Depka. Paul Smith gaining oh, two Le positions. Oh, through. Yeah, LeBert's finally got it done, yeah. Although, is he going to stay through? He's got a poor exit. Keith is having a look and also Thompson. Thompson trying to find a way through. Not a lot of space on the inside of Druid. Ethan maintains fourth and it'll be interesting now to see whether Samuel LeBec can inch his way towards the front two. 
little lock up again there from Samuel LeBaire, but yeah, we'll see what he can do now that he's finally free of that Faker Simmer Sport Europe Cup. Uh, last time around he did a 1.19.6, but Marcel van Nuzen on the other hand was doing a 1.18.4. So um, he'll be hoping to get that as Josh Thompson really now looking on the rear of uh, Jack Keefley as they go through Hawthorne and on their way to Westfields. Uh, could the Faker Simmer Sport Europe driver lose another position by the time we get around to complete this lap? Very quick through. Uh, Westfield bend there, now through Dingle Dellen, up into Sheen Curve, this right hand up, and then the run into Sterling's, 90 degree left, and then uh, the run up to uh, up to Clearways. Oh, LeBert's made a mistake. That is a problem for LeBert. And um, Keithley back through again, so all that hard work from Samuel LeBert. Going down the drain in one corner. Here comes Josh Thompson, though, he's looking to put some more pain on him. Right in the slipstream here doesn't have a go into Paddock Hill Bend. It's difficult to overtake into there in these single-seaters. The lock-up again from LeBaire as he tries to get the best line he can through uh, Druids. Even from Bay. Thompson as well. Thompson locking up too, so uh, driver's really snatching those front brakes and going very wide out of there. Cannot roll out the CQR cars either of Christian Rose and David Baker. They currently sit in 6th and 7th. Baker one position away from his customary 6th position. You can see how wide they how wide they're going on the exit of uh, Graham Hill Bend as well, using all of that astroturf as well on the exit. You know, all of the series that we cover, you pretty much learn never to count out CQR, and uh, here they are with with two cars there. It'd be nice if they could just get maybe one another car out there and, um, and see. I mean, Paul Smith does drive for CQR, doesn't he? So there's a good chance he's actually driving for for them. I don't, I'll be honest with you, I have to admit viewers, I, I do not know whether he's a privateer or whether he's actually a member of the CQR team. There is usually a team mad car in the, um, in the field, isn't there, David White, but he's not, he's not here this week. Mm. Yeah, Tom Depka's out the race, uh, it was too good to be true, wasn't it? He's just retired back to the pits. Uh, as Depka with a lot of damage to the front of that Apex Academy car, he'd been dropping down the order recently. And uh, this demise has come at the hands of a battle between him and a ProSim car. That was uh, John McCutchinson. Oh, and Paul Smith's been around as well. Paul Smith was around at Surtees. Just, um, just, oh, he just lost the rear on the way in, I'm, I'm afraid. But uh, just trying I, to still, I still didn't see what happened to Depka, Adam. Just trying to see whether it was... Can't tell whether... Yeah, I can't tell whether it was contact or not. Oh, he finished hit the wall, it off. Depka hit the wall at some point through the circuit. Because the car was already losing it, um, just going into Hawthorne. So, yeah, I don't know whether either McCutchinson finished him off or um, or Tom Depka was already on his way uh, to that inside wall. So, uh, yeah, he becomes the first retirement. And I don't think he's going to be out in time before he gets uh, classified as a non-finisher. So, going for Tom Depka there and he'll be starting at the back of the group for race two. Van Luzenod struggling out there a little bit. He's now um, 5.3 seconds behind Graham Carroll. And um, Carroll lapped 1.5 seconds quicker on the previous lap. So I'm not sure what's afflicting the Dutchman, but it's not um, going particularly well. Because here comes Samuel Libert. And he, he, he's he got a massive overspeed there. Can't see any damage on the um, number three car, Adam. I might just be struggling oh. here. But yeah, here comes Libert to the outside into Druids. But Van Luzenod covering the inside line off. But... LeBert suddenly found a good run of form and what was uh, Van Luzenor's lap time? 120.0, that's 1.6 seconds slower than uh, Graham Carroll on that last lap. Doesn't have Luzenor's... any damage though, I'm not sure where, where's this coming from? I have no idea. Did he not uh, get enough fuel in it, do we think? Does he realise he's got to save fuel now? Got to be something, hasn't it? It's a bit it? of a poor mistake yeah. if it was. He's usually on par with Graham Carroll and here comes Samuel LeBert around the outside of Martin Van Luzenor's and Will the other uh, Dutchman give him the corner? He does, and LeBert swoops round into second place. It just smacks of lifting and coasting, doesn't it? It can only be that, really, if it's not damage. It doesn't look like it's damage. I mean, I can't see... The rear wing looks absolutely fine. The front wing, there's nothing bent on that, so... Well, we saw we saw in the uh, the Ritmatech earlier today uh, someone having to save fuel, and um, we could tell, tell straight away what it was. And now he's severely holding up Keithley. If this is going to make one. it through into, um, into clearways. That being said, Van Luzenor does get a very good run on the exit, but I think he he's really can't afford to attack if he's having to save fuel. He's now looking to the outside going into Paddock Hill. Thompson and Rose getting involved as well. This could get a little bit tasty here in the, um, in the middle of this race. 
in the BSR Formula Renault series. And oh, who's that up the inside? Thompson having a look on Van Luzenor. Luzenor was having a look on Keith Lee. Ooh. Nearly forces him out there. Uh, Josh Thompson, he has to allow Martin Van Luzenor the space. And he goes back up the inside. Here comes the CQR team. Oh, Christine Rose oh. getting pushed onto the grass. It just about survives. Oh, and wide goes Thompson. Somehow he saves that. I thought he was going to be certes. into the gravel. David Baker might fancy his chances as well. He's going to pick up a decent toe off the rear of that apex car. Well, P6 as well, Dave Baker. Yeah, Van Luzenor very slow. I'm not sure really what's, um, what's happened to him. 21-4 last time around for Martin Van Luzenor. So, yeah, really losing time there. Not losing as much ground now, but it hasn't allowed Graham Carroll to get ahead by eight and a half seconds over Samuel Libert. And Keithley now up into the podium. Apart from Kip Stevens, that was the slowest lap in the field, apart from, as well as John McCutchinson. So, apart from the ProSim drivers, uh, Martin Van Luzenor the slowest driver out there on that last lap. Yeah, that, that proves not a great day for uh, Pro Sim either, doesn't it? <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll see what uh, see what happens again as Thompson on the prowl once more. Van Luzenor really, really struggling out there. It's very unusual to see Thompson having a look at the inside. He thinks it's candy from a baby. Well, the baby um, fought back on that <laughs> occasion. Van Luzenor managing to stay in front. Yeah, I don't know sure what his problem is you would assume it is fuel aerodynamically that um, Renault 2 litre looks pretty decent here he comes again now Thompson two pilgrims drop can have a look into Hawthorne and going through easily so nicely done they have moved that up into fourth position now it's always a bit of a heart in mouth moment when you try and have a move into um, Hawthorne Bend. It's a sheen curve now, Josh Thompson. And now here comes Christian Rose in the CQR car. Well, that's quick in the corners, even Van Luzner, does he? Really, really struggling out there. Having a little look at the inside into uh, Clearways. Van Luzner all down to fifth position now, Christian Rose. Really looking menacing here as we come over the line. Less than three minutes to go. Just a so couple of laps, yeah. Doesn't have to hold on for too much longer, Van Luzen. All the top five is still available, but oh, wow. it's looking pretty dim now. Good cut back by Rose. Going through. Can he stay through? Oh, good chance he can, but Van Luzen, all, oh, that's good driving. He stays in front into Graham Hill Bend. Trying everything, isn't he? Rose now having to attack. Might be worth waiting for a um, waiting for the opening. Christian Rose, go on board with him and see what he can do. That's where we go. And a problem for uh, John McCutchinson uh, whilst this is going on, and a problem for Paul Smith as well. Uh, Paul Smith dropping down the order to 17th. I don't know whether he's got damage at all. I've just seen that now. Um, but yeah, problem for Paul Smith. Oh, he's gone off into the rally course. Um, the rallycross course here, Paul Smith. Yeah. I know he's in the BSR Rally Championship, but um, that is a little bit ridiculous. It comes, um, it comes, Christian Rose. Oh, from the ridiculous to the maybe the sublime. We'll see. Excellent run by the CQR car now. Side by side. Just got to hold on for two more laps, Van Luzenord, and he could still have a top five here. He's trying everything oh. he can. That was very close. Yeah, extremely close. If that was um, one of these cars in reality, I think it may, there may have been a puncture for Van Luzenord. Baker's trying every which way he can to, to try and get an opening, but nothing's presenting itself to him. Rose is trying so hard to get past Van Luzenord because Thompson still isn't that far up the road. The kind of speed these drivers can take into these corners in these Formula Renault cars is uh, quite remarkable if you compare it to the speed Secure Optimus go through there and, and the, amount, the amount of speed you have to shave off. Only a two litre engine as well and um, yeah, showing a, a lot of speed in this car, a lot of downforce. Um, yeah, it's a really, really fun car to drive, one of the best that racing has done. Full stop, I think. Oh. And he's a little bit wide. Yeah, nearly went onto the grass there. And 
if you just touch that part of the circuit, of that part of the grass on the axis of Sheen Curve, then you really are in for a, a risky ride. Yep. Not the sort of ride you want to be on. Right, just one more lap to go then. Graham Carroll's started it. Nine seconds ahead of Samuel Le Bear, Jack Keefley in third, and still Martin Van Lusenol holds on grimly to his fifth position. It just shows really the quality of uh, Martin Van Lusenol if he's having such real issues and yet he's still managing to potentially get a top five. Rose tries the outside line though and um, it was a very, very good attempt. Very, very little on the brakes. Van Lusenol's defending was excellent but here he might not be able to defend this. So he has the inside for Surtees. Oh, oh Rose where's he going? Mistake. Nearly off the track, Christian Rose and Baker up into sixth. Probably going to give Martin Van Lusenal fifth position now. David Baker is a, is a BSR TC champion, but I think Martin Van Lusenal might just have enough here to hold on to a top five now. Well, he, he, yeah, he could well have, but at the front, there's only one man that's really been in this race ever since the start. He um, fought hard to keep his pole position. And over the line he comes, Graham Carroll wins the first round here at Brands Hatch. Samuel Lebert is going to come through for a very, very good second position. Who's going to get third? It's definitely going to be Van Lu uh, no, Sorry, in um, fifth, it's definitely going to be Van Lusenord now. And uh, Baker is going to come home in sixth. Is he? It's going to be very, very close. Having said that, Rose is closing hard here. Oh, what a finish. Baker by uh, by four five hundredths of a second. Jos Honig has lost out big time here. He was in ninth at the start of the final lap. He's had a spin at Westfield Bend and he's now down to 12th. Not what he needed, not what Faker Simsport needed, but they do have a large cushion in the points and Jack Keithley picking up good points for them. Stephen Baxter inside the top 10 as well. He'll be very, very satisfied with that outing. McCutchinson and Kip Stevens just coming over the line now. McCutchinson going to finish in 15th. Stevens is going to take 16th. Um, Paul Smith uh, is going to be the last car that's going to finish. So um, odds are in Paul Smith's favour of getting a reverse grid. I don't know what the numbers uh, start from uh, on the reverse grid for the Formula Renault, but uh, 17th place. I would imagine it's pretty likely. Um, next to the finishing order, Adam, and then uh, yeah, we'll get the we'll get the wheels spinning. Okay, so Graham Carroll takes the win then. Uh, circuit he probably knows well. Uh, second, Samuel LeBaire. Third, Jack Keefley. Fourth, Josh Thompson. Martin Van Nusenor rounds out the top five after holding back the two CQR cars for the majority of the second half of the race. Baker finishing in sixth. Uh, no surprises there, really. Christian Rose in seventh. Stephen Baxter, Rafe, Rafe Cullen in ninth. Uh, and then John Godfrey running out the top ten. Yannick Ongena in eleventh. Twelfth, Jos Honig. Thirteenth, Paul Denton. Fourteenth, for Roy, for, for Roy Viverke after starting in last. Uh, 15th for John McCutchinson, 16th for Kip Stevens, 17th for Paul Smith and finishing 8 laps down after really hitting the wall hard was uh, Tom Depka. Right then, um, so our esteemed director James Nash is going to spin the wheel and then we're going to get a, um, gonna find out exactly where that's going to finish. I believe we may only have 16 and 17. Um, does it go to 15? I think it actually goes to 15, doesn't it? So 15, 16 and 17 might be the only choices that we have. Oh, 16 is the lowest we're being told, so it's either going to be Kip Stevens or Paul Smith. Smith has um, many, many more, more chances than Stevens. See what he can do here. Be 20, so that will mean that Paul Smith will be on pole. I don't know whether he'll be pleased about that or not, but we'll find out exactly how he can do. Uh, with that pole position when we return here on Apex Racing TV for more from the iRacing MSA British Sim Racers Formula Renault Series.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight. And that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night. So you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. Come back to Brands Hatch for round 62 of the RSing MSA British Sim Racers Formula Renault Championship. Andrew Woodhouse with Adam Bath and James Nash at um, the former home of the British Grand Prix. And um, Adam, race one, race one was pretty clean, wasn't it? Only the one retirement. And uh, we've got overcast conditions now, reverse grid. So um could be a little bit different, but the drivers will be hoping that day's pretty clean, I would imagine. Yeah, our pole sister Paul Smith wasn't too happy about uh, arriving for race two and seeing that uh, the overcast conditions have descended here on Burns Hatch. So we'll see what happens. I don't I think, think he was massively happy about starting at the front either. No, in not really. <laughs> uh, so we'll see how he how he takes that. Um, see, he leads the first lap, of course. So Graham Carroll and Martin Van Lusenor, all those guys will be starting towards the rear of the field again. Hopefully Van Lusenor's shaken off the issues that he had from race one. Uh, so see if those guys can get towards the front. It's a track really where it is possible, I could I'd say, for uh, Graham Cowell and uh, the like to get to the front uh, relatively quickly here. So uh, we'll wait and see if that happens. It is, although we've seen um, we've seen it be fairly difficult to make moves stick. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll see exactly how that pans out. Time for the grid then. Paul Smith on pole, John McCutcheon's in second. I've just noticed that Kip Stevens put himself at the back. Uh, Paul Denton's in third, Jos Honig fourth, uh, Yannick Ongener in fifth, John Godfrey in sixth, Rafe Cullen in seventh, Stephen Baxter eighth, Christopher, Christian Rose in ninth, and if they could tenth, then it's Martin Van Nusen on eleventh, twelfth, Josh Thompson, thirteenth for Jack Keithley, and then Samuel LeBear fourteenth, then Graham Carroll, the race one winner, fifteenth, Tom Depka sixteenth, Roy Verke has also been put at the back, most likely a penalty. Uh, that he's incurred from previous race meetings and Kip Stevens, yeah, there he is, starting at the back of the grid. He was going to be starting second or third, I think. 
But yeah, he's at the back. You've got, you've got to wonder if, uh, for, say, for Kit, if it gives him a bit of an advantage really being at the back and not sort of taking the start at where, where he's supposed to be, if that makes sense. There, there we, we go. go. We'll find out <laughs> any second. We'll find out exactly what's going to happen. Green, green, green. The green light is on now. Good start by um, John McCutchinson. He's already challenging Smith into Paddock Hill Ben. Smith maintains the lead, though. Valentin oh. to lead. Oh, goodness me. That was almost the same thing that happened to him in, in Belgium. Last time he was in the series, he had a pole position. Spun at La Source. That was it. Everyone threw. Oh, oh, oh off goes um, Ray Cullinan, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, the the blue, red, the white, and oh, red. Oh, Honig is around. Oh, the back across the track. Christian Rose. Nearly collects, uh, nearly connects Ray Cullinan in there. Honig gets going again. Uh, two oh, McCutchinson. Oh dear! <laughs> went the circuit. He managed to save it somehow. Um, but and here now, Don Godfrey's attacking Paul Denton for second position. Side by side. Through goes Godfrey into Hawthorne. Like I say, I challenged um, Paul Smith to lead one lap. And I think it's looking good for him at the moment. Oh, Christian Rose, no nose cone on that one. Yeah, Paul Smith leads, then it's then it's Godfrey. It's gone then off. <laughs> oh, John McCutchinson's gone off again as well. Oh, big one actually. We've got free cast Kit Sheen Kerb. And that was on Gainer off as well, I think. We've got Rose, McCutchinson, Baker, LeBear as well. Oh. He's oh, done for the day. Oh dear. And yeah, Baker. I think Baker's done as well. Paul Smith then coming through to lead the first lap. I didn't even see the crash. I'm afraid, so um, let to see what happened there. But now it's going to be up to the front three. How long can they delay Martin van Lusen? Well, the answer in the Paul Denson's case actually is not very long because the Dutchman already up into um, second place. Still got John Godfrey in front of him, van Lusen or uh, but Paul Smith got eight tenths of a second lead uh, with no Graham Carroll here either. Uh, he hasn't taken to the grid here for race two. Uh, so it's up to Martin Van Lusen or to uh, try and close the gap here a bit. Well, sure, unless he gets something wrong with the car like he did in race two. In race one, sorry, I'm sure he will um, be able to do it. Oh, Smith goes wide. Going to bunch everyone up into Dingledale. Where's Van Lusen or going to go? I'll be inside. Into he's Sterling's. Try it. And he's through. Oh, Godfrey's off. Keithley has followed Van Lusen all through. Look, look at that. Godfrey could be under pressure even from Paul Denton at uh, this rate and, and Yannick Hongener. There's going to be squeaky bum time for Smith as well here. He does defend the inside line. Van Lusen not going to do that. It's not easy around the outside of Paddock Hill Bend. Oh dear. Makes here it look comes. easy though. And here comes Keithley up into second place. down to third. I think he'd be happy with how the race has gone so far though. Ongena and Denton and Thompson and Baxter fighting over P5. Out of the race we've got two cars so far. John McCutcheonson and Samuel LeBert. Everyone else that was involved in the uh, collision at Shinko have been able to carry on. Baker's still Look there. Christian there. Rose. Uh, both of the CQR cars uh, towards the rear of the field now. Look at the state of David Baker's car. It's an absolute mess. Um, yeah, Christian Rose is. I uh, don't know if it's in a worse condition or not. Really, he's still got the rest of his car intact, but uh, not the front nose cone. Probably see the pedals working from uh, from <laughs> that as they Hon go through. Another battle, possibly. No, I was just saying that oh. Honig's got front wing damage as well. Um, so he's down in 13th place. He started fourth, so it's not going particularly well for him. Kip Stevens actually mentioned him at the start of the uh, broadcast. He's actually up seven positions and up to 11th place. Yeah, they might have got the good idea, actually. Stephen Baxter goes wheel-to-wheel -wheel with Josh Thompson, and it looks like the Faker Simsport car's through. Thompson's not giving up, though. He's ducked back in to get a bit of slipstream here as we come over the line to start at four of the race. But it looks like uh, Godfrey's through. Far beyond me to ruin anybody's fun, Adam, but I, I do think... Um... Oh! Oh, what's that? That's... Josh Thompson. Thompson. It, Thompson's been in the wall. I wonder where he went, actually. Uh... But yeah, yeah, he's gone off. How did that happen? No Hard idea. Hardware failure, possibly. 
I really would imagine so. It literally just goes as if the car's. Yeah, it's as if it's as if he can't see where he's going anymore. And we never see him again. He's exited from the session, so yeah, very weird one there for Josh Thompson. We have a uh, Druid's Bend isn't <coughs> isn't unfamiliar to people having hardware failures. If you just turn your mind back to Colin Cunniff. I mean, uh, it's easier to compile a list of circuits that Colin Cunniff hasn't had a hardware failure on, though. I, I think. Colin, yeah. Oh, poor Colin Cunniff. Well, oh, he's Colin. He's back in the BSRTC now, and those hardware failures, thankfully, seem to be a thing of the past. He's doing really well at the minute, and so I hope it, I hope it continues for him. No, I was just going to say to you quickly, um, like I say, far be it for me to ruin anybody's fun or anything, but um, I know that Kip's putting himself to the back of the grid, but isn't it kind of usually helping him avoid accidents that others are getting into? It's a double-edged sword, really, Do you know what it? I mean? People yeah. like Honig has now got... Has now had a crash, and, and Rose, and um, you know some of the other guys who started near the front have, have had some incidents. Because yeah, if 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 you were, if you put him at the front near where Paul Smith is, and the leaders, uh, the, the quick guys all behind him ended up crashing, then your odds on for either a podium or a top five. That's the one disadvantage really from starting at the rear of the field. So yeah, no, you're never one. really going to get that, are you? I, I guess you're right. As um, Ongena now trying to go past Smith. Got three, I think. Sorry, it is, um, it is Godfrey, sorry, I didn't even see the car. <laughs> the car following along, it is John Godfrey, goes around the outside. Godfrey makes it through into the podium positions. Well, Alex Simpson will be... Um... Oh, oh, oh no! On Gaynor and Smith and Denton! Oh! And again. Hey, me, that's not what they all wanted really there at all, is it? Denton nowhere to go in all uh, of that, really. By the way, that is three more places for Kip Stevens. Or well, maybe this is starting to look like a master <laughs> stroke, isn't it? Yeah, Roy, what, was I, what was I talking about? Roy Viverke as well. Let's see where they come across. I, I've got a feeling they'll be up. Oh, and Gainer's off as well. That's more places. Well, to be fair, Kip Stevens hasn't been able to get by them. He's only just managed to get past Ongena there. So uh, Kip Stevens up into 10th, Roy Viverke up into 9. Well, that's because Ongena only just went off at the exit of Clearways, Adam. There we go. Smith getting past Denton. Well, Denton began past Smith, I should say, finally. So that's for Verke up to um, ninth, Nine. is it? Yes. Ninth, yeah. Both, both Apex UK cars out, so Alex Simpson will be uh, not too pleased driving up to Scotland. Just don't, oh. don't do any reckless driving. Um, oh, dear. Well, I, I think he's past caring, if I'm honest with you. As um, <laughs> Paul Smith trying to go down the back straight then behind Paul Denton. To recover, I'm amazed actually that all three of them are still in the top ten. Only four cars out as well. With um, uh, with well, about just about the halfway mark in the race, a 12-lap race here at Rands Hatch, six laps into it. Yeah, Carroll is out. The Bear, McCutchinson, and Thompson. Carroll didn't take the start actually, so I don't really know what that was for Graham. Yeah, because he he actually uh, he did join the session in the warm-up, but didn't take to the track in the warm-up and. Exited the session before you even got the race going. Yeah, a bit strange there. Race one winner, not going to be winning this one. Um, have a little look then. Everything's really settled down. Ah, the only good battle out on the circuit at the minute is between Tom Depka in fifth position and Rafe Cullinan in sixth. And Depka has had a fantastic race. He started in 16th. Yeah, joint biggest mover, Tom Depka, along with Jack Geefley, up 11 positions uh, from starting 16th on the grid, uh, Tom Depka, and I think that is pretty much last, isn't it, because of his big crash that he had in uh, race one. Started last, um, oh sorry, he finished last in race one, but because Stevens going to the back and Viverke's penalty, um, he actually started on the penultimate row of the grid. Yeah, lap times are like 20.4 for Depka, 20.2, uh, 20.3 I should say, for Rafe Cullinan. Uh, looks like a good lap so far from Depka as well. He's been able to put a bit of a few temps on a Rafe Cullinan here in his pursuit to get a top five result in race two. Yeah, let's see. Um, you know, a top five would be fantastic for Depka. He's in the top ten of the championship. Yeah, we'll see um, oh. what he can do. 
Kip Stevens has spun. I was just about to talk about him battling with Roy Verke, but uh, that battle somewhat been halted as a result of uh, his spin. And now Yannick Ongener uh, is starting to get a bit close to Kip Stevens now. Yeah, it's going to be fairly close between those two. You would think Ongener has the, um, has the pace because he was up in the top three. A little bit of front wing damage though, Adam. I think that's going to... Um, affect him it's only slightly bent up on the on the um, left hand side as we look at it but yeah that will be affecting him interestingly Jack Keefley was six tenths uh, no four tenths of a second quicker than Martin Van Nusenor's on that lap it's not really going to do much uh, Van Nusenor still has a 2.3 second lead over uh, the British driver Keefley four tenths oh Keefley off I was going to say four tenths um for the five remaining laps, though, and he'll be right on his tail. He's going through the final corner. We'll see if he's able to improve this time. Uh, two, at 118.6 was his last lap. He comes over and does a 118.5, so a one tenth of a second improvement. Meanwhile, uh, Keefley does a 118.7. That is uh, nearly six tenths slower than his uh, last lap. So, uh, yeah, 2.5 seconds remains the lead gap. I think that's partly because of the off he suffered at Dingle Dell. Not able to um, quite as consistent as Van Lusenort. If his last five laps have been 18-4, but then 19-7, then 18-5, 18-2, 18-7. So it wasn't, there must have been a mistake in there somewhere because he was right with Van Lusenort at one point. Yeah, gap down to 2.3 again actually now. So two tenths gained on this lap by... Uh, Jack Keefley, good for that sector. Don't know Van Lusenor still has those fuel issues, maybe plaguing him a little bit. Uh, it's just closed up in another tenth through this second sector. Uh, Jack Keefley into Sheen Curve now. Can he close it down another tenth in the final sector? We'll wait and see. But yeah, you can see why here the why the Faker Simsport Europe team are uh, top of the team's championship, especially when you look at Apex UK again, uh, both getting a double retirement. Well, if anybody's going to do it, it's. Um... Oh, as um, having a quick look actually at um, Paul Denton because what he's doing is um, he's just closing in slightly on uh, on the two in front of him. That's Depka and Cullen and Denton leading the leading the AM Championship. The fastest lap of the race by Jack Keefley on that last lap, one eighteen two zero eight. Another four attempts taken out. Uh, Van Nusenov, yeah, Tom Depka and Paul both Cullen and Paul Denton. Uh, they're the cars 4th, uh, 5th and 6th. Uh, Paul Smith still in 7th, uh, in 8th position. The two Pauls, 7th uh, and 8th, Denton and Smith. If there's ever going to be um, a set of conditions as well that really taxes, taxes the fuel economy, it's going to be these. Overcast with um, 21 degrees air temperature and 21 degrees track temperature. So yeah, the um, could, be, could be difficult, couldn't it, really? Um, if some of the drivers have slightly miscalculated. Definitely, yeah. Uh, the drivers have to be careful about making it at the end. Of course, it being a lapped race rather than a times race, it's a bit more easy for the drivers to do that. And of course, without any pit stops either. Gap down to 1.6 seconds now. So a big chunk has been taken out by Jack Keefley on this lap. Uh, gap was 2.1 when we got to the line last time. Over the line we go now, it's going to be about 1.6, 1.7. Uh, 1.18.4. For uh, Keefley, 118, 118 another four tenths. And there's traffic here as well for Van Lusen up. David Baker. Keefley got a chance to put a lap on his championship rival here. There he goes. Doesn't mean he goes a bit wide at Graham Hill Bend, but you don't get an off track there generally on that um, sort of, what was it, sort of Grass Creek strip, isn't it? It's not really a. Um, not really an off track, is it? It's kind of accepted that you go a bit wide there. On iRacing racing, it is anyway. The MSA would be bringing you in for a slap on the wrist, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah. uh, if you ask Ash Sutton or Graham Cowell, that anyway, uh, the gap's gone back up to 2.2 actually. So that lap traffic might have just uh, hindered Jack Keefley somewhat. Uh, I mean, it's so weird because actually, you would uh, Van Lusenord looked like he had the harder time with the traffic, but yeah, he's gained time. Through that section, Keithley did miss the, the apex of Graham Hill Bend, though, and Van Lusenon nearly got high centred on the kerb, which wouldn't have been um, wouldn't have been particularly clever. 
had that before. I actually got no. I got high centered at Inter. Someone got it on um, Grand Prix Four. Got high centered on me. I think as well. I think it did. Yeah, Magulio, um That pesky corner over the line. <laughs> you they go. spun. One. Yeah, because you spun, and then the car was like suspended on the plank, wasn't it? Yeah. Literally nothing I could do. I had to wait for the virtual marshals to come and uh, crane me away. Uh, yeah, the gap down to 1.9 seconds. I believe it happened to. Um... Was it Juan Pablo Montoya once that that happened to? Where he ended up spinning off and getting getting beached? Um, answers on a postcard, ladies and gentlemen, if you know better than that. May have happened to Senna once as well back in the day. But it's not, a, not an uh, uncommon occurrence at that particular uh, corner. I have seen but... Yeah, I've seen it somewhere, but I can't remember where. And not an uncommon occurrence in this series is um, Martin Van Luzenor taking a victory and he's only a few corners away from doing just that. Started in 11th position and has usually made that first lap count. He was in the top five by the end of the first lap. That pretty much won him the race. He's still got clear ways to negotiate. Managed to hold off the charge of Jack Keithley through the final corner then. For the last time and Martin Van Luzenor comes across. He wins round 62 at Grand Hatch. And he's not with a very good second place. Fastest lap on the final lap as well by Marcel Van Lusen. Just if Ooh. there was any doubt how quick he was. Still a, a fairly close battle for third between Godfrey and Baxter. Going to be Godfrey that gets the final spot on the podium. Then it's, then it's going to be Depka and then it's going to be Rafe Cullinan. So that's a good performance from Cullinan up in... Sixth position, Denton seventh, eighth is going to be Paul Smith, and I think you'd have given him that before the start of the race. I think he would have been very happy indeed. P8, uh, ninth for Roy Verberke. Very good, um, excuse me, a very, very good 12 laps for him, and Kip Stevens likewise, tenth. Yannick, uh, yeah, next uh, will be all the drivers that lost something during the race. Uh, Yannick Ongen is going to come around and take 11th position, a loss of six positions during the race uh, after being off quite a few times and during the middle of it. Uh, Jos Honig, uh, poor Jos Honig, who was involved in the contact on the opening lap, uh, is going to come around and take 12th position, about minutes or so behind uh, behind our winner, Martin van Nuzenorzen. Then we're just waiting on Christian Rose, uh, which should mean that uh, I think it is a certainty uh, because of uh, the amount of cars that retired that we should have a CQR, an all CQR front row. Uh, for the race free of the day. Yeah, David Baker's going to be very pleased with that one, isn't he? And um, he wasn't so pleased with the outcome of race two here, but certainly will be satisfied with starting race three from the very front. David Baker comes across, and um, five seconds a lap worth of damage on that CQR car comes across with a 25 3. And, um, yeah, takes pole position for race three. And if you're the finishing order then, Martin van Luzenord, warm up first, grid 11th, race one. Literally a uh, a quadruple, you could almost say, of ones. Uh, Jack Keepley finishing in second, uh, John Godfrey third, Stephen Baxter fourth, Tom Depka fifth, and Ray Cullinan in sixth for Paul Denton seventh, eighth uh, for Paul Smith, ninth for Ray Verke, tenth Kip Stevens, 11th for Yannick Ongener, 12th for Jos Honig, 13th for Christian Rose, then 14th for David Baker, one lap down as well, uh, but he's still a classified finisher. 15th for Josh Thompson, nine laps down, and then uh, John McCutcheon and Samuel Lebeb both 12 laps down, and yeah, only 17 runners because uh, Graham Carroll didn't take the start here in race two. All right then, so it's going to be a CQR front row. They've got a good chance to take victory in race three, and we'll see if they can do it when we return here on Apex Racing TV.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight. And that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night. So you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. Welcome back to the BSR Formula Renault Series here at Brands Hatch. Ruin House alongside Adam Bath and James Nash. And uh, Adam, well, no CQR front row for race three. And could we get our third different winner of the evening? Well, we're hoping so, aren't we? Uh, yeah, Christian Rose and David Baker are going to be starting at the front of the grid uh, after what well, was pretty much a write off of a second race. But it does mean that they have a good chance of taking the victory here. So, uh, yeah, they'll be taking some solace in that. Uh, however, Martin van Dusenod has been looking the quickest driver all day, really. And even though he will be starting at the back of the grid again, uh, he'll still be one to watch out for in the second half of the race as he works his way forward. That's running through the grid. It's Baker and Rose at the front. Uh, then third, Honig, fourth, Ongener, then Rover Verke in fifth, Paul Smith in sixth, Paul Denton in seventh, then Rafe Cullen in eighth, Tom Dipka ninth, and Stephen Baxter in tenth, eleventh, John Godfrey, Jack, twelfth is Jack Keefley. 13th is Martin Van Lusenor, 14th Josh Thompson, 15th is John McCutchinson, then it's 16th Samuel LeBaire, Kip Stevens in 17th, and starting at the back in 18th place, he is here, it is uh, Graham Cowell. All right then, I'm guessing that was just something he had to go and do. We're through the, um, halfway through the meeting, but he's back now. And yeah, I, I've, I must admit, I think, I think one of the CQIs can do this. We'll see if they can. All right then. Another 12 laps here at Brands Hatch. Green, green, green. He's go now as the green light is on. It's a bit of a twitch from Baker. It's a difficult starting grid to set off from. 
is ahead of Christian Rose though. They'll have to work together if they want any chance of taking the victory here. Baker from Rose. Honig's having a look. He's having a think into Druids. On Gainer. Then it's Smith who's got ahead of Averke. Good start by the Yorkshireman. Ahead of the Belgian. And then it's um, Paul Denton. Rafe Cullinan. Oh, Cullinan. And that's Depker off onto the grass. Trying to go around the outside. Not sure Cullinan saw him. And uh, the American going off. Here come the leaders then out of Surtees for the first time. Baker and Rose already establishing a one second advantage over Jos Honig, who's finally had a good start after being involved in contacts in race one and race two. Okay, and Denton side by side into Hawthorne. Denton round the outside. And oh, a bit of contact between Baxter and Godfrey, I think. And then and that means Thompson's having a look. He thinks it's a chance for him to take a win as he's in front of Libert and Van Lusenord and Keithley and all those guys. He was in front of Keithley, not anymore. And Luzon are now close on to Cullen and as they go into Cersei's. Baxter, uh, Baxter stays in front of Carroll. And Luzon North going to get past Cullen and going into clearways here. He has got past already and looks like Cullen, uh, Cullinan's going to get past by Keithley as they go through clearways. Uh, it might be Thompson and Liber as well. Where's Liber going to go? He's got nowhere to go. You need to lift off there, Sam, otherwise it's going to be a problem. Has to go around the outside. Oh, Baker's off. David Baker is off at Paddock Hill. Dear me, would you believe it? Would you actually believe it? After this guy, oh dear, he was off in the gravel and then the car spun around and he uh, backed it into the wall. Oh, he's so lucky he didn't take out Christian Rose. But that's a big blow for his championship because a good result here would have definitely propelled him towards the um, front once more. Oh, it's all kicking off here between Carol Baxter and uh, Cullinan. Oh, yeah. And look, look at that in front of it as well. Keithley, Van Lusenord, and. Uh, sorry, Keithley, Thompson, and Viverke. And they go. Uh, and off is one of the Apex cars there as Cullinan oh. swoops to the inside to so almost have a little look at the inside there. Oh, off. Oh, big one. Carol. Oh, and my word. Who's that off into the gravel? Baxter. That was Baxter. Carol and Baxter off. At the end of their races. Carol might live to fight another day there, but Baxter definitely done. Yeah, it'll depend if Carol's got any damage. He's already having a look on Kip Stevens, but there is no space there. I'm just going to have a look on Depka. Oh! On round the outside of Godfrey. <laughs> Both of them there. He's up to 14. How he hasn't got any damage, Adam, I've no idea. Seems to be more of a spin and a funny oh. bit of contact as he takes the David Baker line through the gravel. That's not the best. Well, Christian Rose now leads. Yosonic now second, 1.8 behind. But here comes Yannick Ongana. Paul Smith getting past Barty Van Lusenord. Or is he? Or is it the other way around? Uh, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll find out, I guess, soon enough. Van I think Smith through. attacking Van Lusenord, isn't it? But, but how about the that? Can he, um, can he get a... I thought about dummying, didn't he, into Hawthorne. Oh, it's a bit wide. Oh, wow, big crash in the background. Denton and That's another car Thompson. over. That's Thompson. Oh, for goodness sake, Apex. Uh, well, that's what we've been saying all season, isn't it, really? Poor driving from them pretty much all the way through. Well, good luck finding... Um, trying to get that car out of the tyre wall there. Dear me. Graham this, Carroll might This is also... all music to the ears of Christian Rose, isn't it? Graham Carroll's gone. Uh, I think that might be disqualification. Um, just having a look on the replay. Yeah, he goes wide. That's a 1x, and that is disqualification. So, uh, Graham Carroll, he was back for a mere two or three laps, and he's already gone again. Yeah, not um, not the best race for him. I'm sure he'll um, do better next time. But um, a... Honig, Ongena, and Van Lusenord is what we need to see, I think, now. Well, once again, this means that Martin Van Lusenord's the last... Uh, the fast car sort of standing. Um, no disrespect to Christian Rose and Jos Honig, of course, but uh, Marcel Lusenor definitely is the quickest here as he goes oh, on the inside of Yannick nice. Ongen. Just surprised Good him there, didn't he? Now, uh, down the straight and under the bridge where Robert Dornboss had an almighty crash in a Super League Formula race. Oh, was that Dornboss, was it? Yes, it was, I think. Wow. Keithley and Paul Smith. Smith I think getting... I know the one. Was it the one where he ended up flipping over? Yeah, and, uh, yeah, clipping the bridge on his way through. Oh, dear me. 
on the Formula One driver, of course, Don Boss. Briefly, at least, anyway, for uh, Red Bull Racing, wasn't it? And Minardi, I think, too. Christian Rose off on his merry way in lap five. They'll be hoping Jos Honig does him a favour here, but Van Luzenor's closing very, very quickly. Apologise to Eagle viewers. It, yeah, it was Chris Vanderdrift that had that crash at uh, Brands Hatch as Van Luzenor takes second away from Honig. Vanderdrift is South African, isn't he, I believe? The inside, the Honig fighting hard against Van Luzenor. Good defending by Jos Honig. But I think I've got a feeling his fellow countryman's going to manage to make it through there, and he does indeed through Graham Hillbend. And now the Belgian driver. Uh, on Gainer is um, not far behind as well, so we've got uh, Benelux out in force here. Yeah, uh, more of them in the top five than UK and Ireland drivers. So a flavour of Europe here as they, they go under the bridge there. The British Sim Racers um, Formula Renault Championship, yeah, it's, it's been a great meeting for um, those uh, Benelux drivers at the moment as Keith Lee battling with Liber. Side, those two were side by side. The best going to do is um, best to make sure that they are again. Jack Keith resisting the offensive at the moment from the bear. The bear's thinking about a look into um, the Sterling's bend. But quite this time. Got the slipstream though. I'm sure Samuel LeBell will just be hoping to finish a race here. Didn't finish in race two. Uh, did well in... In fact, did he have a crash in race one as well? Uh, I think he might have done there too. So he'll be hoping for uh, a result in race three here. Could run out of clearways. As um, off goes um, Martin Van Luzenhoff through the gravel. Oh, and uh, John McCutchinson's out. Uh, he's just towed back to the pits as Keefley goes up the inside of his teammate Honig. Yeah, and... Um... Honig's going to try and fight back on Libert, trying to do, his, do a favour for his teammate, but he can't. Libert's just too quick. Looking at what happened to uh, McCutchinson. Oh dear, he was on the grass on the exit of Hawthorne, and then the car just speared left into the Armco barrier, and that was day over, or race over anyway. Well, when we're uh, not even at half distance yet, and uh, Martin Van Luzenord. Oh, oh, he's going to take the lead here, surely, because Rose is all over the place. And he's going to have dirt on his tyres now. And um, what was probably only a matter of uh, only a matter of time for Van Luzenord has just been made just that little bit easier, losing nearly a second there, Christian Rose. Well, he's reduced uh, the inevitable. Uh, Samuel Lebert, he's done it again at um, at Sheen Curve. The apex driver should survive. He hasn't hit anything, but um, yeah, going into the right hand at getting on the grass and losing control and dropping down to, to ninth. Here we go then. Out for the lead. Rose versus Van Luzenord. We're going to get... Oh, oh, and Gainer. And Gainer spins into the wall. Coming out of Paddock Hill Bend. And oh. that might be his race run. Got terrible damage as the Belgian. It's still pointing in a straight line, I think. And Luzon oh, going not. through into Certes. No, he's towed back to the pits. Rose got a good exit, though. He's not done. Rose just the cut back extremely well. Not going to give up this lead without a fight, although it's very, very difficult to go around the outside here at Hawthorne. And he forced Van Luzon not into a mistake, though. And he stays as close as he can to him. If he can't just um, drag the long... Oh, the man who was a former I racing, former the Renault champion. Former oh, World Championship driver as well, I think. That's right. He's also a winner in the British Sim Racers Touring Car Championship as well. And we got to see him in action at, uh, at, at the hotel where we were for the World Endurance Championship at Silverstone a year or so ago. But yeah, we had a rig set up there and um, a bit to see Van Luzenord at work. And was racing in this carving in a strength of field race that he did. Uh, that he was. Weekend. He ended up ended up crashing, I believe, though. I think it was at Road Atlanta or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're trying to do. Um, I remember they were trying to do a world championship race on hotel Wi-Fi, and that went particularly well. Yeah, I think and not when... Ferrari steam colleague Alex Simpson. Anyway, I think, I think... He went okay for Graham Carroll. I think he finished the race. I think when you realise that the 4G on your phone is better than the hotel Wi-Fi, then 
uh, yeah, I think that that was yeah. what transpired in the end. Um, the worst part of it as was I think it was 3G and not 4G. So that shows that the strength of the uh, hotel Wi-Fi. But um, meanwhile, <laughs> Van Lusenord is hoping for an extended stay at the top of the timing sheet. And uh, he is leading the way by one second now from Christine Rose. But um, I think the challenge from Rose is gone. But Van Lusenord just needs to make sure he's keeping it on the circuit. It'll still be an excellent result for Rose if he can finish second or indeed third. Jack Heathley is menacing him now. He's just about second and a half behind. Yeah, 21.8 for Rose, 20.7 for Keefley. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see what lap sums up when they come over the line to start lap nine of the race, entering the final third. Rose does a 128.2. 21.2 uh, there, mate, sorry. 21.2, yeah, I uh, can't count. Uh, Jack Keefley does a 120.4, which incidentally isn't, isn't too far off Martin Van Lusenord's uh, last lap time, a 40.42 as well. So, uh, yeah, Jack Keefley, uh, second quickest out of the top three, and... Yeah, the gap between him and Christian Rose now down to 1.1 second. Kip Stevens up in the top 10 again in uh, ninth this time. He'll be pleased with that, I think. David Baker uh, won't be pleased with what's going on, I think. And uh, only 10th and with a lot of damage. And he's surely going to come under threat from um, Rafe Cullinan, who is lapping. He actually lapped slower on that lap, so I think Cullinan has actually... I think Baker actually passed Cullinan on that lap, so I wonder if he, the Irishman's had an issue as well. Yeah, Rafe Cullinan, he, he had gone off, but I didn't go back to see what happened to him. So, um, yeah, he's now dropped down to 11th position as a result of uh, Baker getting by. I think, I think it's Keithley and, uh, Keithley and Rose now, really, that's the, the true yeah. battle out on the circuit. Up down to nine tenths uh, now, so it's gone under a second. I wonder if we can just go on board with Jack Keithley. I'll take you through a lap of this Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit as he chases down Christian Rose into Paddock Hill Bend then. Break, break fairly late, maybe even just a downshift for these guys. And then hard on the brakes into Druids. Hug the car on the inside. It seems to take quite a long time to develop, but you use as much of the track as you can. Then into Graham Hill Bend wants to understeer through they don't want to run too wide then it's certied you want this a late apex here can car then wants to get away from you up the hill but it's looking good for jack keithley as he's closing in with the slipstream down the back straight through a pilgrim's drop and then up towards hawthorne bend very fast corner indeed well over 100 miles an hour then through Westfield, through Sheen Curve, and then it's Dingle Dell at the top of the hill. Beautifully done. Car, uh, that corner opens out really nicely for you. Sterling's Ben follows, and that's got a bit of banking to it, so you can really hustle the car through there. And then the final corner is clearways up and over the crest, pretty blind. Not a massive lift through there as well, 100 miles an hour through there. And onto the start finish straight, and that's a lap of Brands Hatch. Jack Keithley has used that lap of Brands Hatch to get extremely close to Christian Rose. Rose is late on the brakes. Keithley's a bit out of control. Keithley now fires it out of the corner. Rose defends the inside line. Keithley's trying to go the long way around. He's out of he's really, really out of shape. There we go. Instagram Hill Bend. Rose is still there. But Keefley threw into second place and what an impeccable last lap that was by uh, Jack Keefley. Problem for Roy Viverke, he's just dropped, just dropped down to eighth place. Uh, might be a, uh, that was a spin on the exit paddock, I think, but he's only lost in one position. He's down to eighth place now. See then if Christian Rose can do anything about Jack Keefley. As the laps tick down here at Brands Hatch, just one and a half to go. And Rose used the slipstream to just stay with the Faker Sim Sport car. Been a good middle sector for um, a Rose. He doesn't seem to have lost any time. Nice and under control. I think Keith has just got slightly quicker carrying that Faker Sim Sport Europe machine. Paul Smith's um, up to fifth now. He, um, but he's got Samuel Le Bear for company. Been very happy with this Paul Smith. Oh. An eighth in race two, a fifth in race three. Yeah, I think. Um, Oh, well, it was a fifth. He'd be very satisfied indeed. If he stays fifth, he's got a good 
Oh, he got a good exit. Oh, no. Though. It's Martin van Luzenord. He's out. What's happened to the Dutchman? It's not an engine. It's fuel. I know he just pulls off to the side of the road and is out. I think he's out of fuel. But the car still sounds like it's got drive. Have a look. Just watch him back on a replay. Have a look. Did he blow the engine? Really bizarre. I really don't know what that is. I heard something. Let's just see. There was no like massive bang and loads of smoke out of the back. You go so. on board with him and see. I was going over the timing line. Yeah, it just pulls over. Literally, I don't think that's fuel. I don't think that's engine. I think generally don't know. Meanwhile, then Jack Keefley, he's on his way to Sterling's for an unexpected victory here. Okay. So yeah, um, <laughs> Jack Keefley. Well, he wouldn't have expected that at all, but he's going to be very, very delighted with the result. And um, Keefley takes race three of the evening here at Brands Hatch. We do get our third different winner, Christian Rose, on the podium for CQR. And also on the podium, he's going. To, there is going to be a Dutchman there. It's going to be Jos Honig. And I don't know if even he realises that. He will now. He comes across in third. Paul Smith is going to get fifth position just behind Samuel Libert. And that is bizarro world here at Brands Hatch. It really, really is. Absolutely shocking, but well, I have no idea what, what happened there at all. Um, yeah, with one lap to go, I'm really, I'm really not sure. Did he think he'd won the race? Oh, surely not. I really hope he hasn't. Um, <laughs> I really hope he hasn't. He, he didn't think he'd won the race. Um, ah, yeah, I had no idea. Absolutely no idea. He did think the race was over. He thought the race was over. Oh, dear, dear, dear me. Oh, well. Oh. But I feel Th for that. that <laughs> that's why I always... That is why I always wait for the spot to come over and say, that's it, it's over. Because I know that I'm a bit thick and I can make mistakes, but that's not great from Van Lusen or the Tall. He'll get 12th position and they'll actually get reverse grid pole. <laughs> um, but yeah, throwing away victory there with just a, a miscalculation. I have to say, usually for me, that's usually that spot of comment is usually followed by uh, "let's pack it up, we're going." Uh, <laughs> usually after a, a we'll uh, get them next time or something yeah. to that effect. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's yeah. when you be the finishing order then. Um, yeah, Jack Keefley takes the win then. We'll be very happy with that then. Uh, Christian Rose in second, making making it. Second place for him, and we do get a Benelux drive on the podium. However, it's Joss Honig, not the one we were expecting. Uh, Samuel Levert finishing in fourth. Paul Smith gets a fifth position. Wow. Uh, sixth for Tom Depker, seventh for Roy Verke, eighth Kit Stevens, ninth David Baker, uh, and tenth for Rafe Cullen. And John Godfrey, eleventh. Martin Van Lusenord, um, noob of the day, uh, getting twelfth place. Thirteenth, Yannick Ongerner with John McCutchinson, fourteenth, uh, fifteenth for Paul Denton, sixteenth for Josh Thompson. Graham Carroll, victim of a disqualification. And Stephen Baxter finishing in uh, last position, 18 laps down. So we're only going to have 12 cars reversed for this yeah, final race of the day. And that's going to be Van Lusenord on the pole. The lowest we've had in, in a long, long time. Um, quickly on, on that point, Christian Rose was was saying that um, too many mistakes in, that, in those couple of laps in the middle of the race it cost him. And I think you would have to agree with that because he only finished half a second behind Jack Keatley. So, but, um, but yeah, that off on the exit of Hawthorne's definitely... That, that's pretty much, that could well be what cost him the win. But you know what? He's not going to care because that's still a really, really good um, haul of points for his team. Dave Baker even finished ninth. So uh, even though Jack Keithley's got a massive advantage now, um, it was important for those guys to at least finish, unlike Martin Van Lusenord. And that's, um, that would make Alex Simpson stay when he finds out about that one. Laughing all the way to Scotland. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's it. Unfortunately, maybe not laughing all the way to the bank. We'll see what happens come the showdown. And we will see what happens in race four as well, as um, the British Sim Racers Formula Renault series continues in just about 10 minutes' time.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the iRacing MSA British Sim Races Formula Renault Championship from Franz Hatch in the United Kingdom. Andrew Woodhouse alongside uh, James Nash for the moment because uh, we seem to have lost Adam back. Now, um, hopefully, he makes an appearance for the, sometime during this race, but um, I'm not exactly sure what's happened to Adam. But um, yeah, we hope to get him back at some point. Final race of the evening then, reverse grid in action. Only 12 have been swapped around. I believe it's good news for Martin Van Luzenor. Let's just see if indeed that is the case. It is. Martin Van Luzenor on pole position then. We're looking to convert that into his second win of the evening, which he almost got in the last race. He was leading the race and thought the race was over prematurely. And, uh, excuse me, pulled off the side of the track and that allowed uh, Jack Keithley to come through and take the win. So Martin Van Luzenor on pole position, John Godfrey second, Ralph Cullen, uh, Rave Cullen sorry, in third. David Baker in 4th, Kip Stevens 5th, Roy Verke 6th, Tom Depp 7th, 8th, Paul Smith, 9th, Samuel Le Bear 10th, Josh Honig. Christian Rose 11th, Jack Keithley 12th, Yannick Ungainer 13th, 14th, John McCutchinson 15th, Paul Denton 16th, Josh Thompson, 17th, Graham Carroll, and at the back is Stephen Baxter. Have we got you back, Adam? That might be a no. As um, we're just ready then, the red lights are coming on. Green light is on for the final time tonight. Decent start by Godfrey. He's already, already trying to pressure Van Luzenor. We know, we know the Dutchman is quick. Going into Druids and everybody. If, see if they all behave themselves. Oh, I think there's three wide in the middle. That might be a bit of an issue. I think Smith and um, Libert locked wheels. A spinner at the back. I believe it's just Thompson. And the man who gets absolutely no luck at all. Um, Gets even less there, and now he's damaged the car trying to spin it round, and he might as well park that one up right there and then, because that is just not a great start at all. Failed spin turn, and it just kind of makes you think, well, that's a shame. Oh, Thompson. Uh, Martin Van Luzenod then leading the way. Second is John Godfrey. Third is David Baker. Fourth is Ref Cullen, and, and fifth is Kip Stevens with Roy Verke in sixth. Adam, have we got you back? No, nope, I don't think we do. Right. Uh, Graham Carroll has crashed. Uh, that is his evening done. It was heading into Westfield Bend. Oh, it was. Oh, it was Keithley. It was a championship leader that lost the car after being hit by Paul Smith and Keithley and Carroll off into the wall and out. Smith's undoubtedly got damage as well. He does a bit, which is going to make him a bit of a sitting duck for the likes of John McCutchinson, who had a race earlier on the season at Road America. John Godfrey having a really good run so far, P2. Third is Dave Baker. He's desperate for a good result as well. Rafe Cullinan in fourth, Kip Stevens in fifth. Here comes Samuel Libert. The best place of the traditional front runners to challenge. Trying to go through on Kip Stevens. Frenchman is late on the brakes. He manages to um, manages to get through. Good work there. And uh, please be joined again by Adam Math. Adam. Hello. Yes. Instant. Instant. That's the source of many. Just yeah, it cuts out. But it's back. Well, you, uh, Josh Thompson. Uh, 
spun off and then damaged his car when he tried to turn it round. Graham Carroll crashed with Jack Keithley and Paul Smith. And, um, and yeah, basically, Van Lusen Nord is leading pretty well, and Godfrey is doing a good job of um, staying relatively competitive with him. At least he was, and Van Lusen Nord now just took 1.7 seconds out of him, and on that lap, Dave Baker is in third. Um, we'll see if the former championship leader can um, get his way back up in second. Ian Rose has just got past Kip Stevens, it looks like, so he's just got into uh, sixth position now. Stevens down to seventh. Yeah, it's been a good meeting from Rose. Been impressed with him recently um, in the in the postures as well. He's gained a lot of a lot of pace. Yeah, able to then um, get up into the top six. Oliver Verke is in eighth place, ahead of Tom Depka. Yannick Ongena in tenth, and then it's. Um, then it's Paul Smith, but Smith, remember, he's got front wing damage. What happened, Adam, I don't know if you saw it, but Smith went into Keithley. Keithley spun and just collected Carroll. There's absolutely nothing Carroll could do. Him and Josh Thompson both out then, so uh, Apex really suffering again here. Well, they've still got Samuel LeBaire running. LeBaire up in fifth position, right behind uh, Rafe Cullinan. And he's got a good run through the exit of clearways here. Funny thing is, as well, we've got four Baker Simsport cars all in the line. Den well, not in, not quite in the line, but um, one by one on the track. Denton, ahead of Baxter, ahead of Keithley, ahead of Honig. 13th, 14th, 15th and 16th. Oh, what a mix by LeBaire. Contact with LeBaire. LeBaire tried to go around the outside and he's made it work. Baker has got through into P2. Good work by the former British Sim Racers Touring oh Car Champion. Word. Three wide here, almost. Kip Stevens, Faverke, and the other one, that's Depka. Oh! Yeah, and Stevens, um, Stevens very wisely decided he didn't want any of that. Yannick Ongena is um, not necessarily going to uh, back out of this. Then you've got the, the train led by Smith, McCutchinson, and then you've got Denton, Baxter at the back of that as well. Tell you what, um, Adam, even though the grid's depleted over the season and we're down to about 18 regular runners now, the competition in the midfield towards the back of the field has been really, really strong, hasn't it? Competition has been brilliant. Oh, Paul Smith. Smith is... Oh, no, he's OK. Didn't hit anything. Lost a hell of a lot of places, though, and nearly got high sitting on the curve again. Um, Keithley, uh, Keithley goes through into 14. I don't think he'll pick up any damage from that at all, even though the front wing looks slightly worse for well. LeBaire versus Baker now, into the first corner. Well, LeBaire is flying, isn't he? Baker had only just... Um, I think Baker made a mistake then, didn't he? Because he's ended up back behind Godfrey. Don's round the outside. Oh, no. Going to be really close. This could be messy. LeBaire up the inside. Baker's coming in hot as well. Ducerti's trying to get through, Godfrey's on the outside line. And look at this now, five car battle. This is for third, uh, second place. Oh, is, is, is something's happened towards the rear of the field, something involving Paul Denton, but this battle's fantastic to watch. Cullinan versus Godfrey into Westfields, and he's gone wide, and that's going to allow Rose through too. Oh, Denton was hit by his teammate, Stephen Baxter. Ongera went off into the grass and McCutchinson got delayed as well. I don't think McCutchinson's actually got any damage, but he um, he basically had to stop because he kind of got he kind of got pushed off the track by one of the crashed cars. So McCutchinson, uh, yeah, his car is perfectly fine, but he's lost a hell of a lot of time through that. Yeah, and Denton's now down in the last. In fact, it's two Baker Sim Sport cars at, at the back of the field, Honig and Denton, and we also just, Stephen Baxter, so three of them there. We were just talking, though, weren't we, about Faker at the start of the, um, the, start of the night, how they've kept out of trouble and been consistent, and there is teammates hitting each other, which has happened a lot in the Apex camp this season, and um, I'm surprised that it happened there. Really, that's not what they need to be doing. Hopefully, for them, that's the only one that... That, uh, that's the only incidence of that. Instance of that, sorry. Uh, I failed English today as well, uh, just, just by opening my mouth. 
well, <laughs> not second the gap then between Marcel Van Leeuwenhoorn and Samuel Lebert. Then uh, David Baker in third. And back up there, Rafe, Rafe Cullen in fourth. Fifth, Christian Rose. Can Rose do anything about Cullen in front of him in the second half of the race? And it's Godfrey in sixth. Seventh, Averke. Eighth, Depkin. Ninth, Kip Stevens. And uh, tenth, Jack Keefley. You wouldn't actually believe half the time that I've actually got an English qualification, would you? But uh, <laughs> Samuel Lebert is uh, is French, so he doesn't so he doesn't need that. And uh, what he is doing is he's uh, in second place at the moment. He's nearly 10 seconds behind Martin Van Luzenord. But in fairness to him, Van Luzenord did start on pole position. So um, no offence to the rest of the field, but it's a little bit of an oh. open goal for, for him. Baxter off into the wall, and that is... Uh, I thought I was him done, but somehow he survived. The Baxter um, took out Denton, and now he's took himself out, unfortunately. And uh, Baxter's usually pretty good. Uh, it's a bit of an aberration for him. Uh, Denton's probably going to wave at him as he goes by, if he goes <laughs> by. Might be oh. not, not a wave necessarily, but... Um. Back, Baxter has dented his car. Uh, Baker, oh no, it's Baker again. David oh, Baker. Is he off, is he? No, uh, he's, he's not damaged anything, but he's half spun on the exit of And that's dropped him to, oh, well, sixth position. Only right. Just overheating the rears, but he did a good job of, um, of stopping the car and get it going again. He's now behind John Godfrey once more. That's not too bad. He's, he's, I mean, he's just done that to get down to sixth, hasn't he, surely? Done the Nelson PK tactic. Or maybe that's maybe that's less spoken about the better. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Uh, Paul Smith, then. As, uh, Kip Stevens having a battle. We'll move on. Uh, yes, just, Paul Smith's just got by Kip Stevens now, so that's him up into 10th place. Yeah, the less Flavio Briatore related things on this broadcast that we do, the better. Here he comes. Baker up the inside of Godfrey into Paddock. And then, yeah, Godfrey just couldn't get the cut back. To uh, Druids goes Baker then. And got up into fifth. In rows in fourth. Red Cullen and having a great race in P3 at the moment. Started there and he has stayed there. Very, very good. And there's uh, five laps to go then. It's been serene progress for Martin Van Luzenod so far. Ten second gap. Yeah, not too often you see a leader have that much of an advantage of course uh, that mistake at the end of race three where he crossed the line thinking he'd won the race where in fact there was still one lap to go uh, really helped him out because of course he was able to get pole position for uh, for this race four here as a Roy Viverke and Tom Depp can now battle it out and that's Viverke um, holding back the Apex Academy car. You can say that I suppose it's helped him out by getting up there but um, I suppose in a way because he only finished 12th in the previous race um, it's averaged out at about a third or a fourth, two third or fourth place finishes, hasn't it? So, um, slightly below par for, for Van Luzenod. So it didn't help him out completely, I guess. It's just giving him an easy, it's giving him an easy win if he can stay there. But um, yeah, not not too much help in terms of the points. Because he lost um, eleven places worth of points, I guess, didn't he? So. Now Baker's getting close to Rose here. I wonder if the CQR drivers are just going to work together and just sort of say, look, Baker's, we'll let Baker through. We'll see what he can do about um, Riff Cullinan. I think he's got the pace, Baker, to challenge the Irishman. But the inside goes Baker into Hawthorne. And through he goes. No resistance from Christian Rose in that, on that occasion. No, yeah, Baker easily through. Back up to where he starts. The Rose, two wheels on the grass and nearly goes. But stays there. Baker nearly, nearly does the same on the exit of Sterling's there. Yeah, Baker's had a couple of spins already tonight. Doesn't want any more. Being where the uh, series is heading to next week. After Brands Hatch, the championship will be heading to Okiyama. Ah, yes, the former Formula One venue, of course. Yeah, it should be fun. It's always a good circuit. Get some overtaken there down that long back straight and down the front straight away as well, which is a really good place as well. 
And of course, we can go. go to any of the circuits with this series, can't we? Because um, if the grid is small enough, we can visit any of the tracks really on high racing. Yeah, that's the problem we have with the BSRTC, isn't it? We have 50 plus entries, and uh, we've had to move uh, the original race meeting at Alton Park, which was supposed to take place this Thursday, to Laguna Seca, uh, due to the fact that we had too many entries. Uh, for this race meeting so yeah we could be seeing of that a few more times this season yeah and unfortunately we also haven't been able to do any of the oval meetings that were originally scheduled we were originally going to go to the milwaukee mile and pocono and motegi uh but in the end uh no dice oh there's only 43 grid spots and viverke then paul smith into the wall and that is it the wall smith <laughs> Oh dear! Oh, he uh, tried to tried to keep it, didn't he? But that's where, that's that's the exact part of the circuit where he ended up crashing whilst trying to give a position back to someone. Oh, I remember that. Um, sure, he doesn't remember that too fondly. He went that was a long that time one. ago, was that? Wasn't it? Yeah, that was about season seven or something. Yeah, the start of season seven, I think. And yeah, that is him done for the day. An eighth and a fifth in race two and a crash in race four. What did he get in race three? A, 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 an eighth in race two, a fifth in race three, and a DNF in race four. Yeah. Now, has Samuel LeBert lost second position as we start the penultimate lap? I think he has. Uh, yeah, he's made a small mistake going into Graham Hill Bend. That's demoted him behind Rafe Cullen, and now he's up to a very impressive second place. David Baker right behind Christian Rose's teammates again. Well, getting there, isn't he? Um, oh, the bear off again. Westfield, Ben. Ow. It's not going well for him at all. How is Baker back behind Rose again? Oh, well. Ah, Depka and Viverke over. Um, oh, yeah, uh, that's close. That's P7. And that is Jack Keithley behind them. Keithley, the man that's only been able, to, seems to be the only driver that can hold a relative flame to uh, Jack Keith, uh, to Martin Van Lusenor, I should say, in this, in this race meeting. Been a bit of an issue for Keithley, unfortunately, he was um, caught up in that crash, and that's where he's got that front wing damage. You can see the front, front uh, left corner is um, bent outwards on the front wing. And here comes Depka, going to think about having a look on the Verke. But not quite this time. Martin Van Lusenor did. Coming through the middle sector. Oh, hello! Big battle, big battle for second, for third place, and Liber is Liber's in trouble. Lost Did positions to both of them. Yeah. Both the CQR cars, and here comes David Baker on his teammate. They go around the outside at Hawthorne. He sweeps around the outside. Baker, they're still side by side. It's going to be he's got a cut away to Van Lusenord. Baker's through, but Van Lusenord takes. The second win for him tonight. This time the race is over. And he can celebrate with the maximum points. Riff Cullinan. Well, what a fantastic race for him. I believe that's his best result in the British Sim Racers Formula Renault Championship. Over the line he comes. Take second place. And third is going to be Baker. On the final lap, ahead of Christian Rose, who stays fourth, funnily enough. Close on the line between Liber and Godfrey, goes to the Frenchman. And then Viverke, Depka, Keithley. Then we're just waiting on the rest of them. Ongana, McCutchinson, Evans, and Jos Honig, Adam, still got a fair bit to go. Honig is, yeah, he's on his way to Sheen Curve now, isn't he? And... Uh, Paul Denton, as he's a lap down, he's already crossed the line. Yeah, let's go wait for Jos Honig. Yeah, it's a real shame for, um, for Jos Honig and for Faker Simspot, really. They've had a pretty poor race. And um, But their title challenge is still alive and kicking. It's points for Jos Honig. That is all that matters. Tom Depke talking about how fun that battle was with Roy Viverke. We did see some of it on the screen, but we did have to cut to that epic battle for um, third position, which in the end was taken by David Baker. Well, 
What a fun race that was, Adam. That was um, really, really intensive battling in the midfield. Yeah, the positions changing left, right and centre, weren't there? As uh, drivers were losing positions and gaining them back. And then in the case of Samuel LeBaire, losing them yet again. Uh, did provide a lot of exciting racing there, but uh, one man who didn't need to worry about that at all. Bookending the evening with victories in race one and race four. Uh, Martin Van Lusen, or we might as well run you through the finishing or then for the final race of the day. Cullen in second, uh, Baker third, Christian Rose fourth, uh, fifth for Samuel LeBert, and uh, sixth for John Godfrey, seventh for Roy Viverke, eighth for Tom Depka, ninth for Jack Keefley, and Yannick Ongana rounding up the top ten. Uh, John McCutchinson finishing in eleventh, Kip Stevens twelfth, Joss Honig, we saw him crossing the line there, finished in thirteenth place. And then Paul Denton, one lap down. Paul Smith, three laps down, crashing in the final part of the race. Uh, then Stephen Baxter, seven laps down. Josh Thompson and Graham Carroll, both eliminated at the very start of the race. Did they were. So um, another action-packed meeting then in the iRacing MSA Formula Renault Series. Um, join us back here on Thursday night the, on the same channel where the British Sim Racers Touring Car Championship will resume. Also got the BSR Porsche Cup alongside it as well. BSR Race Night comes to you live on Thursday at half past seven. All right then, everybody, thank you for watching our coverage of the MSA Formula Renault Championship. Join us again on Thursday for the BSR TC, and we'll see you another time. Good night.